We had to visit the Starbucks Reserve while we were in Seattle. We woke up extra early to get breakfast there. Also, welcome or welcome back to my channel, it's Serene's Life. It was cool to see all the machinery and how they all connected together. By the way, this is actually part 2 of my Seattle trip, so make sure to watch part 1 prior to this. The pastries look so good. It was a huge struggle finding a table since it was so crowded. Fortunately, a family was just about to leave and I took their table. We ended up getting four breakfast croissants, two coffees, and a tiramisu. The coffee was so bitter. We added so much sugar and it was still bitter. At least we tried. I'm not super into tiramisu, but my boyfriend really likes it. Next, we headed to Post Alley to see the gum wall. It was uncanny seeing people touch the gum to take photos, but it was cool seeing it in person. Though we left a few seconds later since it was so smelly. Nearby is the Pike Place Market. We checked out a number of shops and managed to find this cute pink one. They had a number of cute items ranging from cups, stickers, postcards, tote bags, wall art, and even plushies. I thought of getting something as a souvenir, but ended up not getting anything at the end. They even had a free photo booth in the store. We didn't stay long at Pike Place since we had a ferry to catch later. Overall, it was very nice to finally take photos in front of the market months after planning the trip. It's always so rewarding when your vacation planning pays off. On the way back to our car, we stopped at another cute store. They had similar merch as the pink store I showed earlier, but the vibes of the store were completely different. We did some more window shopping. There were so many stores on the way back. We're heading to Bainbridge Island. We had to wait a while to board, but it was a smooth process after that. It was a bit cloudy initially, but it eventually brightened up. Your attention, please. We are now heading at our destination. This part of the trip was less planned. We initially wanted to go to this place, but they were very full. After walking around, we found this nice courtyard area. All the places we wanted to go to were full, so we ended up getting teriyaki takeout. After eating, we found this cute ice cream shop. They even had a pink table outside of it. There were some shops in the courtyard. In one of the shops, the owner has these cute dogs. It was a craft store. We did some more window shopping on the street. This toy store had this funny bear blowing bubbles. We went sightseeing for a bit, but realized there wasn't much to see. Even worse, the ferry was extra delay when we tried to head back. Fortunately, we made it back on time for our Ding Tai Fong reservation. It was located on the top floor of this mall. We had to wait a few minutes for our table, but I overheard the front desk people say that it's an hour wait without reservation. We got this nice seat by the window since we put a request for it. Everything looks delicious. I got a bubble tea just to see how it tasted in America. It was pretty good. We were so hungry, we already finished the plate of shalom balls. We stacked them up to save space on the table. Overall, I think the food was good, but not as good as Dynasty Dumpling House back at home. We called it a night after Ding Tai Fong. The Law Hotel Lounge is so pretty. We got some early breakfast at Charlotte Restaurant, and the window view was amazing. I'm always super basic with brunch and chose the simplest menu option.
Resuming our tourist adventures, we stopped by the Space Needle. They had a lot of fun facts regarding the tourist attraction. We had to scan our tickets in order to enter, then wait a bit to take the elevator up. The views were stunning for real, though looking down is a bit scary. Most of the trip is just sightseeing. They even had a downstairs area with glass flooring. After a few hours, we headed down the elevator and visited the gift shop. There's so many people now. Right beside the Space Needle is the Glass Museum. It was fascinating to see all these pieces. truly unique in their own ways. This outside area was gorgeous. I liked this section the best out of everything. The flowers outside were pretty as well. They had some nice souvenirs in the gift shop, though I didn't end up buying anything. We spent the afternoon in the hotel and relaxed. For dinner, we're trying Chick-fil-A. As Canadians, we tried as much American exclusive food as possible on this trip. I really liked the milkshake and everything we ordered here. It was a lot of fun trying all the sauce options. Although day 4 was shorter than the others, it was still full of memorable experiences. I can't believe it's already the last day of the trip. On our way back home, we stopped by Woodland Park Zoo. I haven't been to the zoo in more than a decade, so I was very excited. The penguins outside are also cute. We stopped by the butterfly garden, and they were literally everywhere. It was a cool experience. We saw a number of birds on our way around, visited many different sections of the zoo. Some of these animals I've never seen before, especially up close.
On our way back to the border, we stop by the outlet briefly. There wasn't much to buy, so we just continued our way back. Of course, we had to stop by Trader Joe's. I thought we would buy a lot, but I only ended up getting this strawberry drink. For dinner, we headed to Olive Garden. I've never tried it before, so I had high hopes. I thought the soup and salad was alright, and for the main dishes, I thought the tomato pasta was good, but preferred this pasta way more. I wanted to try the Trader Joe's drink a few days after I got back from the trip. The packaging is really aesthetic and the drink was just as good. Anyways, thanks for watching until the end of my Seattle trip. I hope you enjoyed taking along. See you later!